The Oklahoma City Thunder played their first preseason game on Monday. What did we learn in that preseason affair with Josh Giddy looking excellent? Trey Mann looks poised for a breakout on both ends of the floor. Plus, the rookie class looked even better than anticipated. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On Thunder podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. You are Locked On Thunder, your daily Oklahoma City Thunder podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's get it going on the Locked On Thunder Podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, media member, and editor-in-chief over at thunderousintentions.com. Ryland Styles, you can follow me on Twitter, at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter, at LOThunderPod. Email the show, LOThunderPod at gmail.com. On today's show, we're talking about Trey Mann breaking out on both ends of the floor. Jalen Williams has arrived Josh Giddy is thriving, and Usman Jang and Alexei Pokashevsky both played very well in this game, despite uh, maybe not popping out on the page on the box score. We'll talk about all that, plus some negatives in the first preseason game of the year for the Oklahoma City Thunder, but I do want to thank you right now for making Locked on Thunder your first listen every single morning, every single day. We're here for you Talking Thunder Basketball. Subscribe for free across all platforms so you never miss an episode. You can find the show on YouTube or wherever else you get your podcasts from. Now, let's talk about this game. First preseason game against the Denver Nuggets. And the Thunder win 112-101 to despite not having SGA, not having Chet Holmgren, not having Lou Dort, who went into concussion protocol um, hours before the game, uh, not having Mike Muscala, who's got a sprained ankle, and playing the real Nuggets, like Jamal Murray was back, Michael Porter Jr. was back, they played Jokic, they played their guys, and the Thunder still got a win. And the biggest takeaway from this game was Trey Mann. I mentioned it yesterday on, on Monday's podcast before the game. I wanted to focus in on Trey Mann because without SGA on the floor, and even without Lou Dort on the floor, and, and, and while missing, of course, Shed Holmgren for the whole year, without those guys... You look up and down this roster, and the best pure score of the basketball was Trey Mann. The best pure offensive threat to score was Trey Mann throughout the entire roster. And so the the load would be on him to score the basketball in this game. Can he do it efficiently? We saw last year where he can put up 25 points, 29 points, 30 points. We saw him score last year. Can he do that effectively whenever everyone knows that he is their lone scoring threat? And he not only did it effectively, I think that he really broke out on both ends of the floor in this game. In the preseason, you know, you're not playing your full minute load or whatever, but he still scored 17 points, two assists, a steal, a block. He shot 54% from the floor on 6 of 11 shooting and 50% from 3 on 3 of 6, 2 for 2 at the free throw line. I think that the most encouraging part was Trey Mann was active defensively. He was flying around, helping in rotation, playing great help defense, drew a charge as well down low. And that activity on defense did not slow him down offensively. He still had the stamina. He still had the ability to be an effective ISO offensive player. And that's really tough to do. To switch and roam and run as much as they do defensively in OKC. I mean, watch how they play defense. Go back and watch the game last night. Watch how they play. They are moving, they're switching, they are constantly running defensively. To be able to do that and then come back down the floor and create your own shot, get separation from your defender, and score, and do it effectively, not a lot of guys can do that. And even while playing off-ball Josh Giddy, as we saw last year, he shot a few very long threes that really helped space the floor on a team that has to manufacture space, Right? It's clear that this team, and they've hired Chip England, that hopefully will correct this eventually, but we can't expect that to be corrected uh, right now, this season, especially in preseason game one. Uh, so they're going to have to manufacture space, and that is taking one of your only three-point shooters and moving him even further off the line, which, of course, draws a defender out even further than where they'd normally be to try to close out on him. And that's just one kind of way that in the margins you can get some more space to operate for your top guys. But I thought that Trey Mann's breakout happened in this game, not only offensively, but defensively. 
He looked smarter defensively. He looked better in rotations. He looked more comfortable defensively in these coverages and in these calls from the OKC bench. And then offensively, he wasn't just chucking the ball. He wasn't just doing step backs and having tunnel vision. It was a well-balanced offensive game. Now, is there still going to be room to grow? Absolutely. There were were times in this game where he put a move on himself, right? He not only faked out his defender, but then he stumbled a bit because he didn't, you know, he, he played too fast for himself. But that only happened once last game versus five times a game last year. Those kind of improvements are good to see. And I think that with Trey Mann, this is not going to have to be his role every single game. I mean, when when this team is fully healthy, you're going to have SGA back who, who can score and take pressure off of him. You're going to have Lou Dort back who, who can score a little bit. And so that just alleviates some of that, that stress from Trey Mann. But he was awesome. And, and, and what popped out the most was his engagement defensively and his buy-in defensively. I think that when Mark and Sam Presti tell you that this team is battling and this team's fighting every single day, it's not just coach speak. I, I truly believe, and I would tell you if I didn't, I truly believe that every player on this roster understands the point that this team's at. While they're not going to compete for a title this year, they have a lot of young guys who can develop into a championship core. They still have a plethora of future first-round picks to bring in other players, either via the draft or bring in proven NBA All-Stars that are going to take your spot. And so the faster you can buy in, the faster that you can develop, the faster that you can um, you know, get to that point, the less likely it is that you're going to be the one that shipped off as a sweetener in the deal. Now, it's a little bit different, of course. It's not apples to apples, but look at Cleveland. They bring in Colin Sexton. Right as Cleveland gets good, sadly, he gets hurt. And then he's traded for Donovan Mitchell, so he doesn't get to see that thing through. He doesn't get to see the other side of that Cleveland rebuild, and we'll see how good that it can be this year. But something to that effect. And so to get that buy-in from Trey Mann defensively, and for him to be pretty good despite his size on the defensive end yesterday. Now, again, it's preseason. Guys aren't as crisp as they will be uh, come October 19th. We'll see how it translates whenever guys are actually in rhythm, and that won't happen until, you know, October 19th, 20th, 30th, until November, December, when guys are truly in their rhythm and, and, and kind of in their progression as offensive players. But at least you have a guy who wants to try on that end of the floor. And to see he has the motor to do both. Uh, I cannot overstate how difficult it is to play with high energy on both ends of the floor, because it takes a lot out of you to, to do that isolation scoring that he does off the dribble. He's not just playing hard defensively and then going and seeing in the corner for the less, for the next possession. So he, he was fun to watch. And this entire game, to me, was just a reminder of how good this Thunder core is. And I, and I think that there's some people who still want to hold out on the core, mainly nationally, and they have questions about the core and everything. Look, you just played the fully healthy... Western Conference contenders without your top guys, and you played very, very well in the first preseason game of the year, which is an excuse for the Nuggets, but it's also an excuse for the Thunder, and the Thunder were ready to execute. So we'll see how this team develops, but it's clear that they have enough pieces to, when everyone's healthy, uh, really make a change in this organization. Probably not this year, obviously, but, you know, I would be stunned, and, and, and Monday was a reminder to me, yesterday was a reminder to me, that... I would be stunned if this team is at this same point next year, if we're sitting here on October 4th, 2023, on the Lockdown Thunder podcast, and we are not over the moon excited about the future of this team and about the future of that season. If they walk out of next offseason without a big deal that makes our jaws drop and makes us feel like this team is, is not only heading in the right direction but is in line to make their playoff arrival, I'd be pretty stunned because of everything that they have going for them right now. Of course, that also has to factor in health. Like, can SGA be fully healthy? Can Chet be fully healthy heading into next year? But in general, this roster next year should look like a roster that you believe in to make the playoffs in 2023, 24. So can you can you wait out this year and just watch these guys grow into that role? But it's clear in seeing how the sophomores have taken this summer and, and ran with it, so to say. But I do want to tell you right now, I'll put our good friends over at Built Bar. 
Built Bar is incredible. Try the Built Bar Puffs because if you don't, you're just simply depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a brand new flavor. It's delicious. It is cookie dough puffs. Covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. It is fantastic. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture with real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories. They have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Go over to Built.com right now to snag a box for you and your family. It is the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place and just hoard them for yourself because they're so good. So check out Built Bars and check out the Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy for you and taste great. Chocolate-covered cookie dough is a with a lightly fluffy texture. It's so good. Check them out today by going to Built.com using the code LOCKED15. That's Built.com, promo code LOCKED15. We are back on the Lockdown Thunder Podcast on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your teams every day. Speaking of the Lockdown Podcast Network, we've put together the ultimate basketball preview for pro basketball Thank you again for making Lockdown Thunder your first listen every single day. Every single day we're here for you talking Thunder basketball. But make sure you also check out our Ultimate Pro Basketball Preview starting October 10th, a six-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NBA season. The local team experts with the NBA insiders of the Lockdown Podcast Network and Odyssey all combine into one Ultimate NBA Preview. It's starting on October 10th. Search the Ultimate Pro Basketball Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app. YouTube, or wherever else you get your podcast from. Guys, as a peek behind the curtain, we've already recorded the uh, the roundtable that features the Thunder preview. It was a lot of fun. You're not going to want to miss it. It's a lot of good banter and discussion about uh, some of the teams in the same vicinity as OKC. So check it out today. Well, on October 10th, but check it out. I'll, I'll be tweeting out the links uh, and get those out to you on October 10th. Now let's dive back into this game. Jalen Williams of Santa Clara is here. He's wonderful. He's him. He's my guy. I am all in on Jalen Williams. I think that this guy can legit be a multi-time all-star in this league. I I think that he's incredible, and he showed that in summer league, showed that at Santa Clara last year. And in the preseason so far, of course, one game, he was very good. 50% from the floor, five assists, a steal, a rebound, 10 points. I tweeted this out, but the word that I would use to describe Jalen Williams is active. He is just flying all over the court. He he has this high motor, can score at all three levels, can be a passable playmaker, and can be a if, if he develops as well as I think he will defensively, especially given the context. Right, he has a really good baseline defensively already, just on his own. He is getting integrated into a system, into a organization that prioritizes defense, and he's getting integrated into a coaching staff that has proven that they can develop defensive players. With all that into the mixing pot, he can be a above average to good defender. Being a good defender in this league is hard to do. Plus, being a three-level scorer. Plus, a passable playmaker. And, for his size, a nice rebounder. If you can do those four things, you can be an all-star. And he's on, he's on a great track record right now. And I think that because the Thunder got the second overall pick and he's not you know, the headline of the draft class, that we forget being picked 12th, that's still all-star territory. That's still a really good basketball player. And the Thunder controlled pick 11 or 12, so you can really bicker back and forth on who they should have picked at 11 versus who they should have picked at 12. Nonetheless, that's the same range that SGA was picked in, and you think that he's an all-star, correct? So it's not as though it's unheard of to have a 12th overall pick become a multi-time all-star or or a high-end player in this league. SGA can get that all-star appearance, you know, hopefully this year if he's healthy and everything. And then, of course, that's not going to happen for Jalen Williams this year. But in his future, years down the line, he can reach that ceiling. Years down the line. But he's off to a fantastic start. He's shined in summer league. He he was brilliant on Monday. And I just think that with Jalen Williams, you've got a very good player. And I think that, again, because you had the second overall pick and he's not the main guy from this class, people just aren't as willing to 
leap out onto that ledge of his ceiling, of his ceiling being this high-end thing. Now, Josh Giddy was perfect. I mean, he was literally perfect in this game. 14 points, 12 rebounds, 9 assists, couple, just just a couple of bounces go the different way on, on shots, and he has a triple-double, which would have been awesome. I already had a tweet lined up in the draft for if he got the triple-double. He didn't. Maybe I jinxed him. That's on me. I'll raise my hand on that one. Uh, two steals, a block of the defensive end. Four turnovers, which, you know, four turnovers in the context of being the lead ball handler for 25 minutes uh, and having really no other, like, facilitator with you. Not not that bad, especially when you dish out nine assists. Shot 54% from the floor. Nice efficiency. And two for two from three. Now, we all want to make the jokes, and also we all want to give credit to Chip England. Uh, I tweeted out that he deserves a raise already, but it's not going to be two for two every single night. What I will say, though, is the same thing I would have said if he went over two, but look like that. I've always told you it's about process over results, and especially in this stage of the team. His comfortability, shooting the ball off the dribble, off the catch, shooting from three, it looks totally different than last year. And the fact that he's more comfortable with that is a good thing. Again, he's not going to go two for two on on Wednesday, but or, or Thursday. I don't know if he's going to play Wednesday, you know, back to back. I'm sure he's going to play against the 36ers. But either way, the next time he plays, he's not going to go two for two from three. Or it's not always going to be two for two from three. But it's about the way that he looked shooting the basketball. Because if those shots rimmed out, he'd still look very good shooting um, on, on Monday. He also made those fantastic passes. We can talk about these every single game. I mean, he made fantastic uh, pocket passes, bounce passes, cross court passes as well. Uh, and then I want to talk about a play that Poku set up for one of his passes. I think that with Alexei Pokushevsky, he looked like a real-life NBA player. He he looked like what Mark described. The game for Poku did not pop out. The game for Poku did not leap out of the box score or the highlights. That's a good thing, really. That's a good thing. He didn't have those awkward, weird Poku plays. He just played like an NBA player. He connected everything very well. He played within himself very well. He had good awareness, um, you know, just as a basketball player in this game. And the biggest play to me that I think showed maturity was the hit-ahead pass to Josh Giddy, who was going down the sidelines. And then Josh Giddy got that pass with one hand and with that same hand just pushed it on a just frozen rope bounce pass to Kenny Hustle for an easy layup. To me, that showed maturity from Poku because I, I, I believe, and of course we'd never know this, but I just think that, you know, in last year or his rookie year, he would have tried to make that full court pass by himself instead of going to a secondary guy like Josh Kitty to make that pass kind of easier. That kind of awareness was good to see. Six rebounds, two assists, a steal, a block for him, uh, five points. He, he was good. He was good in this game. Pokashevsky was legitimately good. He had a ticky-tack illegal screen. That's going to be a, that's gonna be a focal point for, you know, this entire league this year. So just get used to that. Guys are going to have those illegal screens. I saw somebody tweet at me yesterday that they were already mad at Boku because of the illegal screen and the turnover. It's going to happen. That's like that. That's just NBA stuff. He played good. He played really good. As the team played really good. I want to talk about the team play style for a second. They played awesome as a team. They were fast. They were swarming. They were physical. Uh, the defensive rotations for the first preseason game and the first game as a team, while playing 14 different guys, the defensive rotations were crisp and they were good and they never missed an assignment. They were they were communicating on the floor very well. That was great to see. If that's your starting point for a team defense, this team can be a top 10 defensive team in the league if that's where you're starting in game one of the preseason while playing 14 different guys. It is hard to play the way that they want to play defensively, fast, switchy, everything like that, and cycle through 14 guys and not be on the same page or gel with those guys at the same time uh, throughout the course of a game. But they did it, and they played very well. I think that the biggest key was how fast they played. It's why I asked Mark last week about the international take foul being added. I think that this team is built to run. It's built to pick up the pace. It's built by having five passable playmakers on the floor at all times. Therefore, you're running. You're running, and you're putting pressure on the other team in transition. That's how you get easy points on a team that might be deficient at scoring in the half court. That's how you frustrate teams and, and force them to foul you, and then you get the free throw and a side out afterward that's big for this team so i was happy to see how fast how fast that they ran in preseason and again i just want to point out that they played this well they get these glowing reviews without their best guys they get these glowing reviews without sga chet holmgren lou dort even like muscala is a, is a talented backup big that will play 
a role on this team. And when he plays and whenever he gets on the floor, his shooting ability is not something that the Thunder have um, access to very much on this roster. So I think that he, you know, I think that even he is a significant enough loss. I want to touch quickly on Usman Jang, by the way. We saw the pathway yesterday to more minutes for Usman Jang. I was really impressed with his defense. I think that he navigated screens better than I thought that he would. He played really well in an island, even against Bones Highland on, de- on defense. That's the kind of stuff that gets you more NBA minutes because the offense stuff will come around. Five points on one for six shooting, one for five from three, five rebounds and a block. That, you know, that, that'll all come around. Being able to stay on the floor defensively will allow him to develop in this league and not have to go to the G League a ton. He'll, he's still going to go there. He's still going to play for the Blue eventually this year. But if you can stay on the floor defensively and not just be a turnstile, then you can grow with the actual NBA team, the actual NBA players, and the actual NBA setting. So I think that that was huge to see how well he did defensively uh, against guys like bon- Bones Highland, against the uh, Denver Nuggets. Now, coming up, let's talk JRE. Let's talk Aaron Wiggins. Let's talk about how the Thunder won this preseason game one. All the good vibes here on the Lockdown Thunder podcast. We are back on the Locked On Thunder Podcast, on the Locked On Podcast Network, your teams every day. I am your host, Ryland Styles. You can follow me on Twitter at Ryland underscore Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at LOThunderPod. Email the show, LOThunderPod at gmail.com. I think that Jerry is a breakout candidate in a smaller scale, right? When we talk about breakout players, it's easy to go to Trey Mann. It's easy to go to all these different guys on the offensive end. Jerry put up 11 points. Three rebounds, shot 44% from the floor, and I still believe, even though he still couldn't get the shot to fall in this one, but I still believe in his three-point upside in a big way. So offensively, he's a nice player. And defensively, he played great. He was a great defensive anchor for this team. I think that if that three-point shot, or when that three-point shot, rather, comes around for him, because I believe it'll, it will, then you mix that with his defense, he can he can break out as a guy that's like, oh, wow, you know, he, he's a legitimate piece of of a rotation that can play and a player that can play in the playoffs. Like he's a player that you can put in your playoff rotation and he's not playing off the floor and he plays very well for your team. And again, that's not going to break out to be a superstar, not going to break out to be a starter even uh, or an all-star, but he can break out and be like a guy that is a seventh or eighth man on your team when your team is flushed out and ready to go. Same thing really for Aaron Wiggins. I mean, Wiggins, at some point, everyone has to agree that Aaron Wiggins is just good at basketball. He checks all the boxes. And I think that people forget it's his second season. He's 23 years old. This is just who he is. He's a really good player on both ends of the floor. 15 points, two steals, an assist, three rebounds, four for four from three, 62% from the, from the floor. He plays well offensively. He plays really good defensively. And it's always, oh, it's his first year. Oh, it's the, it's the latter part of the season. Oh, it's summer league. Oh, it's preseason. Not just Aaron Wiggins. That's all it is. It's just Aaron Wiggins. They got value at pick 55 in a guy that can be a part of a team, right, that, that is good. Will he be a starter? No. Will he be a sixth man? No. But he will be a part of a, a, a team that gets you through the regular season. Through an 82-game stretch, Wiggins will be there to play meaningful and good minutes. And if he keeps up this shooting and defense, he can be on the floor in the playoffs when it matters. But he can at least be a guy that bridges you to the playoffs and gets you through that 82-game marathon. He's good. Like, Aaron Wiggins is legitimately good. One player who didn't play very good, Darius Paisley. <sighs> it was just a lot of the same stuff for him. Slow slow drives to the rim that never really developed. Uh, 